the soul listens through the ears the soul sees through the eyes but as the soul sees and listens the soul can also imbibe and the way to imbibe is to churn so just like you know when milk is churned it changes into butter similarly when we imbibe knowledge when we churn on knowledge then that knowledge becomes a part of me just like you see um when when people in the world also they churn on you know kaliyugi stuff so when you churn on the news when you churn on what's going on in kaliyug when you churn on that which uh is that which is reminding you that everything is so uncertain and there is reason for worry and fear then that churning fills you with worry and fear similarly baba says that i am the ocean of knowledge and i am giving you i the ocean of knowledge have come from the soul world and i am telling you the truth the knowledge so knowledge is the same thing as truth and that truth which is powerful which makes you loveful peaceful happy everything that truth has all the qualities in it that truth can fill you with everything that you need so baba says i am speaking that truth from my mouth but as you the soul sit in the body and listen through the ears you have to churn on this truth and then this these as i churn on the points of knowledge i will imbibe them and baba says that as i keep imbibing these points of truth that baba keeps giving me i will slowly become like baba in the buddhi so you know baba's intellect will become my intellect and if you look at what is the modli so the modli is baba's intellect presented to us in the form of words so whatever is in baba's buddhi is given to us in the modli and as we take the points of truth from the murli and churn on them then that starts becoming a part of my intellect and when it starts becoming a part of my intellect then my behavior also you know there it becomes like baba's behavior because whatever is i hold in my intellect is the basis of my attitude my vision my action and as i as i hold baba's gyan in my intellect as i churn on baba's knowledge and imbibe it in my intellect then all my actions my personality will start changing from human to that of a godly child so this is the wonderful mechanism baba says through which you can actually become like baba in the intellect and the intellect is the basis of all activity that the soul performs so when my intellect is bap saman then obviously all my actions my vision my feelings my thoughts everything will start to become like baba and then i will behave like a true godly child so this is something that baba is saying today 
and I feel this is very, very interesting and this is an amazing ability of the soul because I the soul can, you know, I can become like anyone. I can become, uh, so as I listen to somebody's truth or ideas and churn on them, I become like them. Now think about it that um, when we are listening to Baba and this mechanism is so foolproof that as you churn on what Baba is saying, you become like Baba, then think about this same law applying to everything you listen and churn on during the day. <coughs> and think about what kind of vicious intellects people have these days. And when you start churning on, you know, the, uh, the words of those who are speaking from a vicious intellect, then you also start getting that vice or you also start catching that infection. And I remember, you know, I was once in a room where there were many, uh, many people and then um, so, uh, so there was this, this uh, lady who got hurt there and then there was this one person who was doing, who was into Vastu and immediately he said that you got hurt because you are sitting in some, you know, southeast, northwest, whatever he said. So you are sitting in that corner which is negative and because you are sitting in that corner you must be careful otherwise you, whenever you sit in that corner you will get hurt. But the interesting thing is uh, when he said that then all of a sudden everybody who was sitting in and around that corner started shuffling and they started changing their position and there was only this one person who had got hurt but everybody started feeling that as soon as we approach that corner something you know something uh, what do you say something ghostly is happening there and suddenly we will fall or get hurt or something of that kind and there was this whole environment where this kind of a uh, uh, of a magical thinking had taken, you know, become part of everyone's process, thought process and they all started thinking like that. But the interesting thing is, I have been in that house for so many years and I have sat in that corner for so many times and it has got nothing to do with the corner. So, this is how, you know, when you uh, when you are, when you live with people who are lustful or fearful or angry or full of complaints or criticism, then you know, you keep interacting with them and they keep talking or somebody who is full of blind faith also. If you keep company of them and when they are speaking, you are also thinking about it, you are also churning on it. It is very subtle, but when you listen to something, you know, um, something that is prevalent in the world, it becomes very easy to churn on it. And when you churn on it, then it becomes part of your buddhi. And this is why, you know, we are all, because we are living with each other, we are listening to each other, and this interaction with impure souls is uh, is the cause why we are degrading so so you know collectively we are degrading so fast and Baba today tells us that you know Baba is not visible to the naked eye and but Baba gives something very concrete he gives the murli in the form of words but Baba says the murli contains ideas, the murli contains truth. 
which we don't listen to every day. So, this is a different kind of a, uh, this is something new that we listen. So, if we paid attention to what Baba is saying and if we started churning on it, then slowly, gradually, you know, our thought process will become like Baba. Our actions will become like Baba. Just like Baba has such a big heart and Baba is always benevolent and Baba is always uh, very committed to his task of creating a pure world, we will also have the same kind of zeal and enthusiasm for this kind of work. So Baba says, you have to keep listening to me, churning on it and whatever you churn will become part of your buddhi. And now it is the only time in the whole of the kalpa where you have the option to churn on godly truth and become a personality which is similar to God's personality. So Baba says do that, that's very important. So don't miss out on the churning, think about what Baba is saying, think about churn the cycle of 84 births. And today Baba is saying that there are two things mainly that we have to churn about. Um, in today's Murli, Baba is underlining that the knowledge of the seed and the knowledge of the tree. So, the knowledge of the seed is the knowledge of Baba. So, what is Baba like? So, when we churn on what is Baba like? then we are churning on virtues, powers and elevated actions. Because who is Baba? Baba is the embodiment of all virtues, all powers and Baba is the one who is performing all elevated actions. So when we churn on Baba, when we think about Baba, then we are basically imbibing virtues, powers and elevated actions and we are becoming capable of that because Baba is the epitome or the embodiment of this. And then Baba says, churn on the tree, so churn on the cycle of time and you see that Time and action, time and thought are very connected. So, you know, uh, there, is, uh, there is always this thing that we know that everything has a right time. So, there is a time and thought, time and word, time and action connect. So, what is a right thought? right word, right action cannot be determined without knowing the time at which it is spoken. Yes, so let's say if somebody creates a thought, I am tired, I want to go to sleep. If that thought is created early in the morning, then that thought is not a proper thought. But if that same thought is created in the night, then it is absolutely the right thought to create. Now, if somebody says that, you know, everybody has to go and we have to prepare for our death. So, if somebody does that, says this, when somebody has died, you know, then people will think that they are commenting that why are we, you know, so at that time you must say that have patience and it's okay and I understand it's a loss but then I wish you peace and happiness and patience. So these are the words you have to speak at that time. At that time if you speak about you know that uh, they are gone and it's all for good and this and that. So that doesn't make sense at that time. So Baba says that Everything is connected to time, so the words, the thoughts, the actions 
are all connected to the time and time is a very important factor and in the limited sense of time so you know we have this sense of time of 12 of the 24 hours we have this sense of time of which month we are in or which part of the year we are in or even about a limited life cycle so you know people will say that so you know there was this uh, there were these two girls uh, young girls who had visited the center and their father was in the army so she told me that yesterday my parents had gone to watch a movie and she was telling something and I said okay so you didn't go and watch a movie so she said no we are not allowed to watch a movie because we are only 12 so after 14 we will watch movies so that was very beautiful and they said that under 14 no movies so after the after we enter the teenage so then we will be allowed to watch movies so that was something that was programmed into them that after you finish your 13th birthday and you enter the 14th then you will be allowed to watch movies so Baba says that you know in the in terms of the life cycle in terms of the cycle of seasons in terms of the cycle of the day you have some awareness of time and you see wearing wind, wearing warm clothes in winter is the right thing to do but wearing the same clothes is some in summer is the most weird thing to do so everything is uh, it is according to time and Baba says now I am making you aware of the unlimited time cycle so you are aware of many small cycles you are aware of the cycle of day and night you are aware of the cycle of a year you are aware of a life cycle you are aware of the cycle of seasons you are aware of many cycles and according to that you choose your thought word and action and that is the sensible thing to do but what you don't know is the unlimited cycle of time which Baba teaches us in the form of a big clock which is there in the picture of the cycle and Baba says that according to that you know you have to understand what time it is now and there is a time you know to there is a time for purity there is a time for impurity so two yugas you are pure everything is perfect everything is well organized then there are two yugas where you can't help but fall so you know that the population will increase the impurity will increase the chaos will increase and that is the time so that is the time for everything to fall apart that is the time for everything to decline but now is the time to go back to the new world now is the time to go back home and you know sometimes people just come and ask us you know um, you people are telling you people are sharing the knowledge of purity and you are asking and urging people to be celibate but if uh, everybody was celibate then how would you be born or you know your parents didn't accept celibacy that's why you were born so these kind of logic you know they come and share with us but the interesting thing is you don't understand that Baba also didn't come and tell at that time so at that time the population could increase now we are in a time when there is population explosion when there are so many problems because of this huge you know influx of souls on the planet and this is the time to go back this is the time to go back to the world of purity so Baba has come and is saying it it's not like so you know 
if you so when covid came so there there was a government mandate for social distancing now think about it in an ordinary time when it is not covid if the government said that you uh, you know you follow social distancing it would look so weird you would say why should we stay distant from my own wife my own child but at that time it was the right thing to do so what is the right thing to do you cannot understand without understanding the time that's why you know sometimes when we don't understand the time cycle that baba is telling us we have questions about shrimat so no we we don't understand why baba is saying because why baba is saying what he is saying because we don't understand the time now baba is saying you understand that this is the confluence age this is the time when everybody has to go back this is the time when the new world is coming whether you like it not like it whether you want it don't want it is not the question this is the time to go back this is the time for the new world to come and the time is telling us to prepare because you can't go back without preparation an impure soul cannot go back to the pure world without becoming pure so this is why baba says this is why i the ocean of purity have to come and inspire you to be pure at this time because now it's time to go back now it's time to come to the new world and baba says that this is why the knowledge of purity whether it is purity of uh, you know yesterday baba talked about transferring the baggage so purity of wealth so that also is important because this is the time when even if you don't invest it will turn to dust so you know if you don't use your resources it will turn to dust it's not like you have an option to use it for yourself so the time clock is kick- ticking fast so either you use it in a you know in a worthwhile way for seva and create your fortune or it will all turn to dust this is why baba says don't waste this is not the time to waste this is the time to invest this is the time to use your body use your mind use your wealth to create your sanskars and your sansar so baba says this is why you have to churn on the time so if you think about the if you think about baba if you keep churning on the knowledge of the seed and you keep churning on the knowledge of the tree then you get an accurate sense of you know who we are who we have to become and what needs to be done at this time and if we don't churn this knowledge so you know if you don't understand the time so let's say you know um, uh, so i remember you know this one incident so when i was in uh, the health ministry at that time uh, so we were in nirman bhavan and um, on the 25th of january so all the offices would close at 12 because there had to be the rehearsal for the parade next day and preparations for the parade next day so one day you know it was uh 12 o'clock and my friend was telling me hurry up please pack we have to leave please pack we have to leave and i had forgotten that it was 25th of january and i was just telling her why are you in such a hurry to leave i don't get it and why can't you just sit and relax and do your work it's just 12 o'clock and then she told me it's 25th the office is going to close at 12:30 so you better pack everything and we have to leave otherwise you know the metro will be very crowded so at that time i so i was just thinking about that one day today that when you miss you know what time it is 
then you sometimes don't understand why the other person is in so much hurry. <laughs> so, you know, every day Baba is like, uh, you know, just telling us, do this, do this anyway, and the time is very less, the clock is ticking. And we say, why is Baba in such a hurry? If I slept one day at Amrit Vela, what happened? Nothing, nothing big is lost. But if you look at it from Baba's standpoint, then Baba can clearly see. And if you look at the picture of the cycle, you know, the clock is just touching 12. So it's just going to be time up very soon. That's why Baba is every day, you know, talking like that. And why don't we get Baba's message? Because that time cycle is not sitting in my buddhi like it is sitting in Baba's buddhi. So we have to think about the whole time cycle, every day churn on it so that I get a sense of time and I have to churn on the seed Baba because the more I churn on Baba's purity, Baba's love, Baba's power, Baba's actions, Baba's purpose, then they start becoming part of me and my attitude also starts shifting to that of a godly child. So this is something. And then I liked two things which were very interesting in the Murli today. And um, this, these two things relate to something that people ask us, but I did not know whether Baba has given clear Srimat on it. So, you know, uh, there are people who come and ask, how, have, how do we sit in meditation? So, what should be our posture? And I always tell them that, you know, you have to sit comfortable, relaxed and straight. But today, Baba has defined a posture also. <laughs> so, Baba says, sit in a semi-lotus posture. So, that which you call Ardh Padmasan in Hindi, in which, you know, you keep one leg, uh, you know, folded over the other, not both folded, which is interlocked, that is Padmasan. So, Baba says that is a difficult thing to do because that then your, you know, your, all your attention will go towards the legs and the pain there. But if you sit in this one posture, which is Ardha Padmasana, and let me tell you something about Ardha Padmasana. It's a very beautiful posture. It doesn't cause pain and it helps you keep your back straight. So whenever you are sitting in that posture, your back will be absolutely straight and you will be alert and you will not have any difficulty sitting like that also because it's a very comfortable posture. So Baba says, um, so there should, Baba just, Baba doesn't say that it is mandatory or something because Baba has always said in the Murli that if somebody is ill and passing through some sickness, then they can also lie down in the bed and <laughs> listen to the Murli. That's something different. But Baba says, you know, at least a yogi should look like a yogi. So when you are sitting, if somebody looks at you, then you know, you should look like a Raj Yogi meditating. So this is a very good way of sitting. And I have always admired the way Baba and Mama sit in, from the pictures I have seen. And it's a very beautiful, so you know, uh, Baba also sits in that beautiful straight posture and Mama also has a very royal dignified way of sitting in yoga. And I once saw a picture which is a very, uh, you can find it on Google also. It's, it's Mama giving drishti to Prakashmani Dadi and Prakashmani Dadi is also sitting in a very graceful, royal dignified posture and Mama is also sitting in that posture. And Baba says, when you are sitting in meditation, sit in a royal posture. Then, you know, it looks like a Raj Yogi is sitting. And that's something very beautiful that Baba says today. 
another thing you know there is um, i have always um, so many a times there have been questions about euthanasia or mercy killing so you know there is this um, this thing in the world where people think that if somebody is dying so and somebody is in pain then they should be killed so that they don't have to endure too much pain so that that's called mercy killing and in many countries it is legal also because they think that if somebody is in pain and acute pain and there is no hope of them uh, living beyond that and they have to die from that pain so if you kill them through some drug or medicine or whatever then that's kind of a mercy to them because that person will be relieved of the pain and many a times i have been in situations where people have asked whether you know that is a right thing to do or not and today in the murli baba has told us that we don't do that baba has clarified that even if somebody is in pain even if somebody is in illness we will always tell that soul you know remember baba because if you are in sangam yug and if you remember baba then even in those last moments if if it is even one day you are earning one more day of you know um, you having an opportunity of one more day of earning income through remembrance so baba says that's not what we do so baba would never say that you die early because you are in too much pain because even if you are killed and you don't change that you know if you don't absolve your karma then you will be reborn in pain so even in that pain you can remember baba and absolve yourself of that karma so this is something that uh, baba has clarified today and um i had not heard this clear explanation although i knew that this is the right thing to do but uh, this is something that baba clarifies in the murli today and then uh, baba is talking about many things which are very very important in the murli today and i would re- request you to go through the murli several times because it has jewels like anything today but today i would talk about the um i will talk about the blessing so in the blessing baba says that if you want to become like baba then you have to align your thought word and action and for that you have to finish all desires all limited desires and you know only yesterday it is very interesting that yesterday i was thinking about this thing that when we listen to baba's murli and we are all good children of baba so we are not children who are into hypocrisy or we are just listening to the murli for the sake of listening to it no we intend to uh, put it into action also but then what happens what goes wrong so you know when we listen to the murli we have these elevated thoughts and we think about you know i will uh, we think about being disciplined we think about being surrendered we think about doing everything like baba says we always plan about doing everything according to shrimat but then what happens then our buddhi gets lost in limited desires <laughs> and you know this desire these so many desires are there so you know the desire to eat roam 
the desire to change somebody, there is the desire for perfection in this old world, the desire for things, the desire for satisfaction of ego, the desire for material wealth. And the interesting thing is, even if you spend all your life running after these desires, these desires don't get fulfilled. But there is this sanskar of running after desires. And although we understand everything, our buddhi gets um, just what we say bhatakna, you know. Hamari buddhi bhatak jati in these desires. So, you know, we are all, so there was this, uh, there was this um, fictional story we used to watch and listen as a child, Mungeri Lal Ke Sapne. So, you know, <laughs> so there is this one person who is sitting and dreaming and then he just, you know, he sits and dreams, I will have a, I will do this business, then this will grow, then I'll grow rich, I'll buy a house, I'll do this, that and the other and then he ends up breaking a glass and losing what he already has. <laughs> so, it's very similar to that, you know. We are all lost in these limited desires and this limited desire is a sanskar. So, every time you understand everything, but then, you know, your buddhi is... And I, I remember there was this one brother in my office when I was working and any time you see him, he's on his uh, computer screen, there'll be makemytrip.com and he would be checking the hotel prices and the flight rates and this and that all the time. And, uh, and one day, you know, I asked him, when did you go for a vacation last? He told me five years back. So, for f so he's not traveling, <laughs> he's not going anywhere. But all day he's checking hotel rates and flight rates and which destination to go to. And I told him, do you understand what amount of your time and thought are you wasting on this stuff? But this is what we are all doing in different ways. And I think that uh, if we just paid heed to what Baba is saying today, and if we just practice this one thing deeply, that I have Baba and I have all that I ever needed. And just create that state of contentment. Then you know, we will be very much focused on our Purusharth. Because this state of discontentment, this state of running after limited desires, it is just wasting our time and thought and not allowing us to put our sreshth sankalp into action. So, we are all thinking very elevated when we are listening to the murli. But why we are not able to put it into word and action is because our buddhi gets lost in these running after limited desires. So, if we just practiced, you know, this deep down that I have Baba, I have everything and I don't need anything now. I'm not running after anything in this world. My only aim is to belong to Baba and do what he says and claim my inheritance. And if we just practice this and stayed focused, then it would be very easy to reach our complete stage. Okay, Om Shanti.